So hi everyone, today we are excited to have Dr. Francis Yan with us. He's a senior researcher at Microsoft Research and Azure for Operators. And his research focuses on uh, practical machine learning for networking. Uh, he completed his PhD in computer science at Stanford University. Uh, and he's received several awards, including the IRTF Applied Networking Research Prize, the USNICS NSDA Community Award, and the USNICS ATC Best Paper Award. Uh, so today he'll be talking to us um, about um, uh, ap applied machine learning in network systems. And um, thanks again for uh, uh, giving us a uh, talk. Uh, we're very excited to have you here. Okay, over to Francis now. Uh, thank you, Sangeetha. Sangeetha for the introduction and thanks for having me here. Uh, it's my pleasure to give a talk on the work I did uh, back at Stanford with my former PhD advisors, Keith and Phil. And uh, this work is about two sequential decision problems on the internet and how we build platforms, which we use to train uh, machine learning algorithms to solve these prob problems in practice. So uh, please feel free to interrupt me if you have any questions. Um, let's get started. Um, as we know, network applications <clears throat> send packets on the internet, and many of them have also deployed some sort of adaptation algorithms reacting to the changes on the internet. Those adaptation algorithms observe a network path and decide how many packets to send or what to put in them. As um, you know, packets flow into the network, the network's condition is going to be changed. Then uh, these algorithms will get a new observation about the network and make another decision. This is known as sequential decision-making. To give you a concrete example, uh, Zoom is doing sequential decision-making right now. For instance, if the video of my talk suddenly freezes due to, uh, let's say a congested uh, uplink of mine, then my Zoom may decide to drop video frames and send audio only because that would give the link some time to recover so that the video can be resumed later. And uh, seriously, please let me know if that does happen today because uh, Seattle's Xfinity seems to be less reliable than, than the Bay Area for, for some reason. And uh, in fact, such sequential decision problems are pretty common in networking research from the application layer to the link layer. Uh, each pro problem here has been extensively studied in the past. And my research at Stanford focused on two of them, video streaming and congestion control. However, uh, before describing them, uh, let's look at why sequential decision problems on the inter internet are challenging and worth studying. First of all, the most distinguishing feature of sequential decision-making is that each decision may influence the later observations and have long-term consequences. That means before the algorithm tries to make a decision, it has to take the future consequences into account. And secondly, the internet is composed of numerous routers and, and hosts. Not a single device is able to observe the complete internet. And this partial view of the internet makes it hard for an algorithm to make good decisions. Thirdly, I'm going to show later that the internet is so diverse and noisy. And that's why uh, I will show that why it can be a problem. And uh, uh, lastly, for those algorithms requiring a good network simulator during the algorithm design, the bad news is our research community doesn't know how to faithfully simulate the internet yet. Although uh, sequential decision making is hard, the silver lining is that in recent years, uh, reinforcement learning or RL has made a breakthrough. Uh, for those who are not familiar with RL, uh, RL is a paradigm of machine learning designed to solve the exact problem of sequential decision making. Its typical framework or model is similar to what we just saw with slightly different terms like state and action, 
And I will say the main difference is environment or the internet in our case can also produce some reward in this model. So the reward is used to indicate how good the action of the agent or uh, the network algorithm was. Another reason why ML is a natural fit for such problems is that the internet produces a huge amount of data and ML is good at finding patterns in big data. That being said, uh, the adoption of ML is still very slow on the internet. Researchers have proposed many learning-based approaches, but their uh, good performance reported on um, network simulators or uh, small test beds often couldn't generalize to the wild internet. Well, uh, there's a reason why we still heavily rely on simulation or small test beds because uh, there are hardly any large network systems in a real world open to researchers for training or testing their algorithms. So uh, we approached sequential decision problems on the internet from two perspectives. We built large scale open research platforms for training and validating ML algorithms and also designed such ML algorithms that worked in practice. This talk will be uh, in two parts. First, I'll describe Puffer, uh, a live streaming platform for uh, video streaming research. Using Puffer, we uh, created a learning-based adaptive bit rate algorithm, Fugu. And then I'll introduce Pantheon, uh, a community evaluation platform for uh, congestion control research, as well as an ML-based congestion control scheme of our own uh, called Indigo. Uh, let me first uh, start with Puffer and uh, quickly de describe adaptive bit rate streaming or uh, ABR. It's a critical algorithm being used to uh, carry a large portion of the video traffic on today's internet. At a high level, um, ABR, aims to improve the user's quality of experience or uh, QOE, which is basically uh, a function of video quality, smoothness, or uh, rebuffering. Although uh, a huge amount of effort has been put in into this area, ABR still remains challenging because the two primary goals of ABR, higher video quality and fewer video rebuffering, are naturally conflicting with each other. Let me show how, let me show you how ABR works. An ABR server uh, divides the video into chunks. Each chunk is uh, usually two to six seconds, but can be uh, flexible, the length. Then uh, each of those chunks is pre-encoded into a couple of compressed versions at different sizes and video qualities. So the objective of ABR is to uh, decide which version of each chunk to send so as to optimize the total QOE of the client. Same as other sequential decision problems, ABR requires somehow uh, planning ahead. Um, for, so uh, for instance, if the ABR algorithm decides to send the largest chunk, it will certainly achieve the highest video quality, right, at that step. But it might also drain the playback buffer in the client and cause video freezes. So that's why we, like ABR algorithm, needs to plan ahead. To uh, study this problem and test ABR schemes in real life, uh, ideally on real users, we built our own video streaming platform uh, called Puffer. It's a live TV streaming website open to public in late 2018, allowing users to watch six TV channels for free. And our goal here is to uh, create a realistic testbed and learning environment for the community to uh, investigate video streaming algorithms. Uh, we operate Puffer as a randomized experiment of ABR algorithms. That means 
each time you visit our website, uh, puffer.stanford.edu, you will be randomly assigned to one of the ABR schemes being tested. And users don't know about the, the assignment. Um, I'm going to skip the demo, but uh, you're welcome to uh, create an account and try it yourself. Uh, to recruit users, we uh, purchased ads on Google and Reddit for uh, keywords like live TV. For example, uh, New York Times recommended Puffer to, to uh, those who need free TV service to watch at home during the pandemic. As of today, uh, we have attracted more than 130,000 uh, real users across the US. Um, Puffer's webpage might look simple, but uh, you can think of it as a, a small YouTube TV uh, built from scratch. It's a lot more challenging to support um, 130,000 users than uh, just building a research prototype. This picture uh, shows Puffer's architecture. We receive TV signals with an antenna, uh, decode the signals and encode video into different versions. And we serve them using uh, different AVR algorithms to our users. And we've, got, we've also got uh, a monitoring system to monitor uh, the health state of the system and send an alert to my phone if anything goes wrong. So I'm basically on call 24 seven. And any time, like whenever there's a bug in a, in, a, in a code, I have to just fix it right now. Otherwise, I have got uh, will got, get like emails from our users. Um, so we wrote more than uh, thirty thousand lines of code for Puffer and have used it for, uh, to stream sixty years of video to uh, one hundred thirty thousand real users. We're also publishing anonymized data every day and opening Puffer to the research community to train and test ABR algorithms. So um, we've built, uh, so any question about uh, the platform itself? Yeah, okay, then uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, the RL part. Um, so we've built a video streaming platform and collected a huge amount of data, right? And let's turn to the part where RL comes into play. In, uh, in the RL model, our agent is, sim is simply the ABR algorithm, and it interacts with uh, the internet, which is the environment. The agent observes states such as network conditions, and then uh, selects a video bitrate accordingly as the action. It also receives a reward for the action's quality, such as QoE and it continues to observe new states from the internet. This uh, modeling process sounds pretty straightforward, right? Well, um, it turns out there are um, still a couple of challenges to solve. Um, first, let me show you that the internet is actually surprisingly more noisy than we expected. This figure uh, has the results of an experiment we did on Puffer. Uh, we run five ABR algorithms for a day and ended up streaming 17 days of video to our users watching TV on that day. Uh, for now, please only uh, look at the 95% per, uh, confidence intervals around each point and ignore uh, like those algorithm names or the exact performance. You can see even after streaming 17 days of video, the confidence intervals are still huge and overlapping with each other. You can't really tell which algorithm is better uh, than the others. So um, we, we leave the experiment running for a week. Uh, still, we can't dis distinguish most schemes. After a month, things get a little better, uh, but we can see two algorithms called H, uh, MPCHM and this BBA, they have almost identical performance. But is that true? We found out the answer after running a, the experiment for eight months. 
streaming 13 years of video data in total. And after uh, zooming in on this figure, we can now tell that MPCHM and BBA are actually different. They have different performance. And more than that, their di uh, performance difference is statistically significant. And we can also distinguish uh, the other schemes now. But remember, uh, this is possible only after streaming at least two years of video per scheme. You know, th this is bad news for RL because um, RL relies on being able to slightly vary an action and detect a change in the resulting reward. Now our, uh, our results show that you can't detect a change in the reward even if you completely replace the algorithm and run it for a month, let alone tweak an action. So the takeaway is the internet is way more noisy than we thought based on our exper experiment on video streaming. Thanks, we it, have a question here. Yes. Uh, could you, um, how did you model the internet as an environment? What kind of features did you consider? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, so for the exact modeling of the problem as the RL algorithm, I'll, I'll show that uh, more details later, but basically some network conditions and um, uh, packet level statistics. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you later. Yeah, in a later slide. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so unless extremely robust RL algorithms are proposed, it can be super hard to train directly on the internet because it's just too noisy. So uh, a, commonly, a commonly used alternative is training in network simulators since simulation is much more stable than the real world. This is uh, exactly what Pensive did in SICOM 2017. Pensive was, uh, so this is Pensive. Pensive was trained in simulation using a type of RL called model free RL and reported near optimal performance in simulation. However, uh, this is our real, uh, uh, real, this is real result on the experiment on Puffer. You see, when tested over the real internet, it did not really outperform the other ABR algorithms it compared with uh, in the paper. I'll, I'll present this figure at the end again and explain the uh, x-axis or uh, y-axis and explain uh, what's going on here. For now, all we need to know is, unfortunately, Pensive's simulation results was unable to generalize to real life. And this uh, wasn't actually too uh, surprising because after all, there's a gap between training in simulation and testing in the real world. And this gap is known as sim to real. So simulation to reality gap in RL. And it's a common reason why RL algorithms often don't generalize. There's a question here. Are all these methods uh, RL based? Are uh, what? Oh, so all, the these, all these um, methods that you in this plot are mm -hmm. all of them reinforcement learning based? Oh, uh, no. So only uh, Pensive is model free reinforcement learning and Fugu is a type of reinforcement learning. And the, uh, the, the other three algorithms are traditional uh, classical like algorithm based on control theory or just based on heuristics. Yeah, that's a good question. And um, next, I'm going to describe how uh, exactly we uh, used RL to tackle this problem and uh, how we worked around the same to real gap. The, uh, the first step we took was to understand the system dynamics better. Um, I, I won't go into detail of this figure, but if we plot how the playback buffer size on a client um, evolves over time, we'll see the only uncertainty in ABR is the transmission time of a video chunk. That is simply how long does it take for a client uh, 
to receive a video chunk since the chunk left the sender. That is transmission time, and that's the only system uncertainty. And uh, the algorithm, <clears throat> excuse me, the, uh, the algorithm we proposed is called Fugu. At its, at its core, um, it uses a neural network to predict the transmission time of each chunk. This uh, transmission time predictor, TTP, takes as input the sizes and transmission times of past chunks and also the size of the chunk to send. Um, I'd like to stress that um, we don't predict throughput because um, a throughput predictor wouldn't consider <clears throat> the size of the chunk to send and would have ignored a well-known fact in networking that the observed throughput actually varies with uh, file size. Another uncommon feature of the input is low-level TCP statistics from the kernel, such as RTT and congestion window size. This is weekly crossing layers with information flowing from uh, transport layer to application layer. So uh, this is the input or the state that uh, Fugu observes from the internet. The uh, output of TTP is unusual as well. Um, instead of a point estimate, TTP outputs a probability distribution over transmission times. And we found it to be uh, useful when maximizing the ex expected QE. In sum, TTP has several uncommon features in the design, and uh, our ablation study found each of these features to be necessary to uh, Fugu's performance. And uh, now is the part how we train TTP um, in practice. So we train TTP in situ, uh, meaning in place on the real data from the deployment environment, Puffer. And uh, during training, each user stream of uh, chunk by chunk uh, series is fed into TTP as input. And because uh, the training data contains um, ground truth transmission time of uh, each chunk, we are actually able to leverage the more stable and efficient supervised learning. So no reward is actually needed. Also, uh, since the training of TTP is on log data, no network simulator is required either, which successfully, uh, successfully avoids the same to real gap that I mentioned earlier. And in RL, this training method is known as uh, batch RL, offline training on batches of data. When most real systems don't allow ML algorithms to uh, directly train on them, we found this learning pattern to be uh, more practical. We have a question. Yeah. Uh, what kind of probabilistic distribution does Fugu predict the parameters of, or does it use some quantile-based approach for the probability distribution? Yes, uh, that's a good point. So the probability distribution is over transmission times. And yes, so it can be a regression problem, right? The transmission time can be just a real number and uh, we, we let TTP learn uh, that. But quantizing the transmission time into uh, half a second uh, bins, uh, each bin is uh, 500 milliseconds, and that tends to uh, you know, reduce the regression into classification and makes the problem more uh, uh, practical. That's a good question. Okay, um, if there are no other questions, I'm going to talk about, so after the only system uncertainty is approximated by uh, TTP, uh, that means TTP can predict the transmission times, the only uncertainty. The remaining question is how to actually select the version for each video chunk. And what Fugu does 
is to look five chunks ahead and optimize the total QE in the look ahead horizon. And roughly speaking, the QE function includes um, higher V2 quality, lower quality variation, and less rebuffering time. So uh, given TTP, this optimization problem of maximizing QE can be solved with a well-known technique in, uh, in RL called uh, value iteration. I, I won't explain uh, how exactly it works, but you can think of it as simply dynamic programming. So we can write, uh, implement a dynamic programming um, algorithm to solve and to optimize uh, QE. Uh, so after uh, deep, the dynamic programming gives us an optimal plan, Fugu only takes, so the optimal plan, optimal plan is uh, shown as the blue boxes. Fugu only takes the first step and then replans for the next five step, uh, five chunks. This is also a classical technique in control theory called uh, model predictive control, which proves to be mitigate, like proves to be helpful to um, mitigate the accumulation of errors. So uh, the model errors or any other sources of errors. Putting everything together, uh, including the Puffer video server, the model-based controller, and the TTP, Fugu falls into a class of RL algorithms called model-based RL. And the optimal plan of chunk qualities is computed in real time with dynamic programming and repeated queries of TTP. And after uh, new data is collected and aggregated, we retrain TTP offline using uh, supervised learning. And we deploy the new version of Fugu on the next day. And uh, finally, uh, let's take a closer look at this figure. So this figure has uh, five ABR algorithms, including Fugu, and the Pensive is the model-free RL we saw earlier, and the other three are just classical ABR algorithms, handcrafted algorithms. And uh, here we have, so the y-axis shows the video quality measured by a standard metric SIM. Higher is better. And the x-axis shows the uh, stall ratio, but we have uh, reversed it. So the better is to the right. That means in this figure, uh, the better QE is up and to the right. Compared with the other state-of-the-art ABR algorithms, Fugu achieved the highest video quality and lowest star ratio, except that uh, robust MPC has a slightly lower star ratio than uh, Fugu, but that comes at a great cost of video quality. So this is the average video quality. If, you, uh, if I uh, play a video, uh, carried by robust MPC to you, you will notice uh, each video chunk, the, the quality is often uh, worse, is often bad, and then the variation is, is also uh, pretty high. So uh, Fugu's quality variation is also the lowest among all schemes, but we are not showing that in this figure. We are only showing the average SIM. So a 0.6, uh, difference in the average actually is pretty noticeable to users. Um, now I'd like to conclude Puffer by summarizing the takeaways. Uh, uh, there's a question here, sorry. Yes. Um, what is the computation overhead of the method? Is it fast enough? Okay, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, so the neural network we, we used is a uh, you know, it's a shallow network. It only has two layers, each with uh, 64 neurons. And the input and output space, I'm not going to, no. Okay, so the input dimension and output dimension are not huge either. So the compute overhead is pretty minimal, like um, it can be done within several milliseconds, typically one or two milliseconds on a tested on our machine. So that's not a, uh, and com computation is not an issue. 
Uh, uh, one more question. Yeah. Uh, what are the features of states in the Fugu RL model? What are the states of Fugu in the model? Yeah. Uh, so the input states uh, just contain a vector of these uh, metrics, such as the sizes, transmission times of past chunks. And I talked about the uh, size of the proposed chunk that's, uh, that, that distinguishes us from a throughput predictor. And uh, this is also a cross-layer, uh, weekly cross-layer design. And, and uh, low-level TCP statistics are also uh, fed into uh, TTP. So this is the state. And the action, the action is not the output of TTP. So the action is uh, after TTP outputs the probability distribution, we use the model-based um, controller to output the action. And that completes the modeling of this uh, of BR of Fugu as an RL algorithm. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, so um, as we see, uh, Puffer is a video streaming platform that we built for uh, the research community to train and test novel algorithms. It has 130,000 real users now and has streamed more than 60 years of video. And using the data, we had a surprising finding that the internet is way more noisy than we expected. You may need two years of data per scheme to reliably measure a 20% precision. That's a huge amount of data. And we leveraged model-based RL with a few networking insights to create Fugu, an ABR algorithm that consistently outperformed existing schemes in the real world. Fugu's transmission time predictor, the TTP, is learned in situ, meaning on real data from the deployment environment. The training doesn't require any network simulator, and thus we avoid the generalization issue caused by sim to real gap. And uh, next, I'm going to talk about Pantheon for congestion control research. And before that, any questions about Buffer? Okay. Um, congestion control, okay. So congestion control, we know it has a deep literature of 30 years and still remains a cornerstone problem in networking as it affects the performance of almost every network application. Uh, I assume uh, we've all heard about uh, congestion control, so I'm now going to describe uh, this example. Basically, it's an algorithm that avoids network congestion by controlling the packet sending rate of a network program. And besides prevent, uh, preventing uh, packet drops, it also needs to achieve high throughput to be useful. And before um, we try to design a congestion control algorithm using ML, especially RL, let's take a moment to recall the importance of benchmarks in machine learning. For example, we all know about uh, ImageNet, right? A, a benchmark data set of labeled images has been given a huge credit for the success of computer vision. And in a field of RL, training typical, typically requires more than data. The closest equivalent to uh, ImageNet in RL is something like OpenAI Gym. It's a benchmark platform containing a collection of training environments, so more than data, training environments for RL research. And uh, motivated by ImageNet and especially uh, OpenAI Gym, we built a gym, a gym for um, congestion control research. Like OpenAI Gym, Pantheon doesn't make any assumption on the tested algorithm. To benchmark the performance of any algorithm, um, we built a VPN called Pantheon Tunnel to log every data sent from the algorithm uniquely. And Pantheon includes the tunnel in a software, uh, software library and enforces a common testing interface. 
unlike uh, OpenAI Gym, we are offering more than simulated environments. We deployed measurement nodes in more than 10 countries and spent a decent amount of effort uh, making cellular networks accessible. And then we uh, continuously benchmark a reference set of uh, uh, congestion control schemes and publish the data on our website as a searchable archive. And this reference set currently has more than uh, 15 algorithms from both academia and the industry. But uh, what's most satisfying to us is that Pantheon has assisted four other algorithms from other um, research groups in publishing at top conferences, including uh, Vavachi and Copa at NSDI 18, Aurora at ICML 19, and TCP Tech at SICOM 20. And we worked closely with them, with the authors during their algorithm design to deploy a, a series of prototypes and then use Pantheon's measurements to inform each decision, each uh, iteration. So, and besides uh, assisting algorithms from other research groups, we used Pantheon to design our own ML-based congestion control indigo. Here is the uh, typical RL model again. Um, the agent is the congestion control algorithm now, interacting with uh, still the internet. The agent um, observes states like congestion signals from the network and outputs actions to adjust its congestion window size, which you know uh, determines uh, the maximum number of outstanding packets and uh, effectively controls the sending rate. There's uh, currently no consensus on the objective function for uh, congestion control, but it gener generally consists of throughput delay and, and loss. And uh, no consensus is exactly the first challenge of applying RL to congestion control. If there is no consensus, how do we formulate and design the reward? And there are actually other challenges. And uh, for instance, the reward is sparse and delayed and adjustment has to be re uh, real time. But what I like to point out again here is training RL-based congestion control algorithms directly on the real networks may still infeasible because the, uh, as we saw uh, earlier, so the internet is just too noisy for the training to converge. Uh, so in the insight behind our own congestion control algorithm is based on a widely known fact that the ideal congestion window size is roughly the size of BDP, bandwidth delay product is the best operating point to achieve the highest throughput and lowest delay at the same time. Unfortunately, we don't know BDP in real life. Otherwise, congestion control will be a solved problem. However, we can calculate BDP in network simulators on simple simulated links with uh, constant bandwidth and constant minimum RTT BDP is simply the product of these two values. And on more complex simulated links like those with uh, fluctuating bandwidth, we can search exhaustive, ex exhaustively sorry, offline around, around uh, some promising initial value. Um, in short, the ideal congestion window or uh, BDP can be approximated pretty closely for uh, simulated links since uh, we know what parameters are used to simulate those um, links. And if you are looking for just one takeaway from our algorithm, this will be it. Given a simulated link, we can approximate the best congestion window by calculating the BDP or searching for the BDP. Then we can further uh, create a congestion control expert that achieves the best performance. And I'll use this figure to demonstrate how the expert works. Assume that on some uh, simulated link, the best congestion window size is 70 packets. That is our target. 
and our current congestion window size is 30 packets. And suppose we have a limited number of actions like the, the five actions in the, in the figure. And the congestion control uh, expert will simply output the action, one of those five actions, that brings the current congestion window size closest to the target. In, ex in this example, it will want to uh, double the congestion uh, window size because 60 would be closest to 70. And that's just the simple idea of, of the expert. And with uh, these congestion control experts, we designed our own algorithm, Indigo, by mimicking the expert's behavior. And this technique is known as uh, imitation learning, one of the most efficient algorithms in RL because essentially it leverages uh, supervised learning underneath. So uh, since the experts only exist in uh, simulators, we created a, a bunch of uh, synthetic simulated networks with constant bandwidth and delay to train Indigo. The, uh, the learned algorithm is stored in a recurrent neural network, an LSTM, and we selected some common congestion signals as the input and the five actions as the output. And I won't elaborate why we chose those uh, input and output features, uh, because there could be better input or output. The main takeaway is really that we can create congestion control experts for simulated links and then apply imitation learning to mimic the expert's behavior. And that, that would be the takeaway. And here's the evaluation result uh, in simulation. Uh, uh, I want to apologize again. There's a lot going on here. And, uh, and all I'm trying to show is that Indigo is able to achieve um, dominating performance in simulation in terms, in terms of throughput and the delay compared with um, the more than 10 congestion control schemes. And I don't really want to explain this figure because what matters more is the performance in real life, right? So this figure shows the real performance of these algorithms in real life. Ah, what you want? In, in, yeah, in real life. On a real path from, AW, from uh, Brazil to Colombia on Pantheon. And each congestion control algorithm was run uh, 10 times, and we plotted the average throughput on the y-axis and 95th percentile one-way delay on the x-axis. And we reversed the x-axis again, and we like doing that. Uh, so the better is up and to the right. And Indigo is here. It's on the frontier, but unlike in simulation, it's no longer dominating the performance of the other 12 uh, algorithms in real life. It brings, it, it brings us uh, back to the same to real gap once again. So if we train an ML algorithm in network simulators, we really should deal with the general, generalization issue explicitly. So uh, that's our next step. How do we close the same to real gap? Um, the method we tried is to create a more accurate, a more faithful simulator and ask the question, what simula simulator parameters can faithfully simulate or replicate a given real network path? It's quite surprising that today's network simulators, uh, as two, th as three mahi-mahi, provide so many fine-grained parameters but none of them actually tells you how to choose them. As the first step towards more faithful simulators, we proposed a new figure of merit, uh, merit called, uh, that we call uh, replication error. And the definition is, fo is as follows. First, we uh, pick a real network path on Pantheon as the target we want to replicate. 
and then we run a bunch of transport algorithms on, on this real path. The average performance on the real path is plotted as field dots. And next, we choose uh, simulation parameters and create a simulated path. And we run the same set of transport algorithms again and plot the simulation performance as open dots. And roughly speaking, the replication error, the new figure of merit we are proposing, is the distance bef between those pairs of field and open dots. The closer each pair of dots is, the better, because that suggests the simulation parameters we selected is able to give us, uh, are able to give us a simulated path closer to the real one. And now we have defined an ob objective function, the replication error. And then the problem of looking for the parameters to form a faithful simulator has become an optimization uh, problem. And to cut a long story short, we just used uh, Bayesian optimization because it best suits our uh, use case. And in our evaluation, uh, we managed to uh, create six calibrated um, uh, uh, simulators. So they, they were close to six of Pantheon's real paths within replication error of 17%. We call them calibrated simulators. And now uh, we come back to the original question. Can we leverage those calibrated emulators that are more realistic, more faithful compared with real uh, net networks. Can we leverage them to bridge the sim to real gap? And um, yes, we can. The answer is we can. So if we throw the six calibrated emulators into Indigo's training environments, we found that the performance did improve to some extent from Indigo to Indigo calibrated. Well, um, there is still some room to to its left, to sorry, to its right, but it already has the highest throughput, and its delay is within uh, ten milliseconds from the lowest one. And the internet is uh, complex and hard to replicate. We know, uh, but our calibrated uh, simulators are a good step towards bridging the same to real gap. And last year, my colleagues at MSR India, uh, they published a paper in Hotnets, and uh, they, uh, their results showed further improvement on Pantheon's calibrated simulators. So uh, now I'd like to conclude the takeaways from Pantheon. Pantheon is a training ground, a gym, for congestion control algorithms. It measures a set of 15 algorithms continuously on real network paths in 10 countries, and it proves to be useful to the community, helping other algorithms publishing at top conferences. And it also enabled a novel design of our own. And the key insight, uh, the key takeaway, is that we can create congestion control experts for simulated networks based on BDP. And then we just train an algorithm, train Indigo, to mimic experts' behaviors. And since the experts only exist in simulation, we deal with we, we have to explicitly deal with the sim to real gap to achieve generalizable performance in practice. And that's why we created uh, calibrated simulators, which boosted Indigo's performance in real life. Uh, so any questions about uh, Indigo? Okay, so uh, I really want to share this. So at the end of this talk, I'd like to share some of the lesson, lessons I've learned the, the hard way while trying to make RL algorithms uh, practical and generalizable on real networks. So we've got three options. The first option we have is training directly on real networks. And in this case, we would have to revise the adopted RL algorithms to be more robust to the extremely noisy rewards that we often observe from the network. That is Puffer's finding. And the second option is training RL algorithms in network simulators. 
In this scenario, we'd want to pay more attention to the same to real gap. I've talked about uh, Pantheon's calibrated simulators, which make the simulation more realistic. However, uh, that's not the only way to close the same to real gap. Currently, I'm collaborating with uh, UChicago uh, on a technique studied already studied by the RL community, community called domain randomization. It basically says that as long as we create a variety of randomized simulated environments for the training, then the real environment is likely to be just one sample contained by the rich training distribution. And the third option is training in situ or batch RL on the real log data from the actual deployment environment. And that's what we did for uh, Fugu. And uh, so this is the end of my talk. So I talked about my research on uh, ML algorithm platforms and algorithms for solving sequential decision problems on the internet. And um, yeah, that, that's it for today. And I'm happy to take more questions. Thank you. Thanks for the great talk. So there is a, a question from uh, the ABR section. Uh, yes. Can you use the trained model for a, sim, uh, for a similar environment to predict the network delay? Uh, could, could you repeat the question again? So the uh, model. Can we, can we use a trained model for a trained, similar environment? For uh, the to, simulated environments? Uh, for a similar. Uh, like uh, similar the, environments, yeah. yeah. Uh, to predict the network delay. Uh, I see. Um, so the question is about, um, let's see, it's about TTP, right? Yeah. Uh, so if, if the, um, okay, I, I, I think the question, okay, the, the question is about learning in situ. So if we train this TTP on a similar environment, not on Puffer, but uh, in some other uh, video streaming system, can we generalize the trained model to Puffer or to other uh, systems? Am I understanding the question right? Uh, I, I'm not sure. Can Saeed please explain? But also, like, if you think about, uh, you know, solutions like CFA, they yes. look at users uh, in a given location, and then so it could be that environment also. So instead yeah. of having one generic um, uh, ABI algorithm, maybe mm -hmm. for all Wi-Fi users, I have an one algorithm. Ah, I see. Yeah, that, that's a good question. Okay, I, I got this question. Um, that's a good one. Um, the, the answer is we uh, we haven't tried training different ABR algorithms for uh, users on different networks or on different uh, environments. Uh, we believe it will be more uh, fine grained uh, that way, uh, but you know it it also comes at a cost of generalization uh, generalizability. So the model will be more specific to a set of users, and if you can't cluster the new user into the correct cluster, right? If you uh, can't do that, then the model's performance is not likely to uh, generalize. Yeah, it might be overfitted to that environment. Mm -hmm. For instance, I can, I can, in my browser, trick the platform thinking that I'm on a Wi-Fi network, but in fact, I'm not. Or I can trick the uh, server um, by saying, I'm using Windows, but actually I'm using Linux. And if we train uh, algorithm just based on that input, and th that will be um, that wouldn't be a good idea. But it, it's, it can be a good idea to maybe measure the uh, user's network, uh, uh, like the RTT, right, the uh, packet loss, and then uh, based on its uh, specific based on the user's specific network condition we run a cluster algorithm like CF, cf8 uh, did that could be uh, working but we are not sure okay thank you yeah wow uh, yeah so there's another question here in Fugu, mm -hmm. what was the sequential cost function which was optimized by model predictive control sequential function uh what do you mean by sequential function the sequential cost function Cost function. So the key, 
mother pairs the controller right yeah in the monpred discussion yeah uh, can you please expand like the person who asked the question can you expand on what you mean by the sequential cost function is it the uh, uh qoe prediction for the next pie chart uh-huh yeah so um the qoe prediction for the next chunk so um I really uh the qoe is just a linear function of these three metrics and uh, we want to optimize the QE for the next five uh, steps. And we can just, you know, um, use value iteration. So that's a dynamic programming because you, you can uh, backtrack or uh, bootstrap the best options in the, let's say in the uh, four, four step ahead to calculate the optimal decision for the three, uh, for th three steps ahead. And I, I don't really have the formulation here, but uh, our paper has the exact, um, the, the function, the ob objective function. Okay, uh, yeah. thank you. There's another question. Yeah. Um, so thanks for the talk, Francis. In your papers and in this talk, you have talked extensively about robustness to changes yes. to the environment, mm -hmm. trying to make the controller's policy uh, good on unseen network conditions, yeah. but not about state-based robustness that the broader RL and ML community is often more interested in, which means making the underlying DNN robust to small adversarial perturbations. Mm -hmm. So is this because that sort of robustness doesn't matter in the setting? Uh, that's a good point. So um, I, 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 and so sensitive to um, neural networks are uh, we know sensitive to perturbations and adversarial uh, attacks, but um, it's not a problem. We 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 haven't thought about this problem because so you know the performance is is good enough, and um, the TTP, uh, even though it can be sensitive, and sometimes it does output a, a wrong prediction for the transmission time, but we still have this model based controller. So it's a dynamic programming algorithm that we know exactly how it works. And um, it given wrong or wrong predictions of transmission times from, from the neural network, this model-based controller can still usually output a reasonable uh, action, right? And if you think, think about it, so the worst scenario, the worst thing that can happen is that the optimal uh, decision let's say is the best, best version. And somehow we, uh, so somehow Fugu outputs uh, the worst version. And that would just be one video chunk, two to six seconds, the user has to bear with a wrong decision of, of Fugu. But after that, the algorithm um, will rerun, replan, do the replanning. And uh, it, so now it, the, the, the whole optimization and neural network has have to just run execute once again. And it's unlikely for that part of, like sensitivity to perturbation to happen every time at every step. So that is uh, why we haven't been con like concerned with this problem. It's not like usual ML algorithm like problems that a wrong decision will classify an image from from cat to to a dog that that's a, a huge mistake but now the mistake um yeah so the risk is much lower and under control uh does it answer the question that's a good one um i guess so yeah yes thank mm. you yeah. Uh, yeah uh uh i guess that was the last question uh, yeah. thanks again for a great talk uh, sorry for the inconvenience in between. Uh, uh, but yeah, you're doing great work. Looking forward to more work <laughs> in this area. Yeah, that's, uh, thanks. Thanks for the kind words. And yeah, and I also I apologize for my tired voice. I've been speaking too, too much recently. Uh -huh. Yeah, so yeah. students have written that you've taken uh, the efforts you've taken to evaluate your research in your both your papers is extremely impressive and inspiring. So there are a lot of positive comments here. Yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll be happy to take more questions if you 
like uh, send me an email like anytime. And uh, I'm also interested in collaborating on the future uh, work, right? Uh, so how do we make generalizable and practical RL algorithms for the network? Yeah. Yeah, looking my... forward to chatting with you more. Thank you. Yeah, it's my pleasure to be here. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Ita.